D Major, I am so stoked to get to talk to you today. Uh, we have an interesting topic. It's really about owning your own platform. I, I mean, a lot of people just focus on trying to compete on Facebook and Instagram, uh, right. YouTube, you know, all these different platforms, but you've actually created your own platform where you control the audience, you control the messaging, and you really control the whole aspect of it. Uh, D Major, right. can you kind of tell me more about like your background and how you got into really just owning your own platform? Okay, so around the age of 12, uh, I had two uncles that were really into the music industry. I had one uncle, my uncle Corey, who passed away. He was, he worked for Def Jam. Oh, wow. So he was in charge. Yeah, he, he was in charge of bringing all that music from New York, like Run DMC, Beastie Boys. He brought all that down to the South. So awesome. he kind of took me under his wing. And then I had another uncle, Chris, who actually still does music. And he did a lot of things with Oprah in North Carolina. And they both together kind of took me under their wing because I just made beats, Brandon. That's all I used to make with the beats. So, you know, five or six years went by. You did a couple. I did a couple songs with a couple of underground artists here and there, but I learned the business. Right. And, you know, hell, I'm 40 now. So I just kind of transformed into this media guy, expert, you know, knows how to do this, knows how to do that. I actually had uh, one of the number one studios, recording studios in North Carolina for about three or four years that's awesome so you gotta remember all that networking all that traffic's coming in from the studio you're learning okay maybe this artist needs this or maybe this artist is this far away from getting this so long story short me and my business partner thought about let's create a radio station we got yeah. this big studio over here we've got hundreds of artists coming every month i mean it was like it was literally a night it was more than a night i said i say on the average, Brandon, we recorded from 10 a.m. to literally 3 a.m. Oof. Four or five days a week. It's a grind. That's insane. So I had five or six, maybe seven engineers on call. I had to, yo, this guy's burnt out. Can you come in? So, you know, through all that, you know, you learn and you build a, a network of all these artists. And what's the one thing they're missing? Platforms. Right. And that's well, I mean, I that's how you t took it to that next level. And I love that you you're yeah. always thinking of how you can kind of take it that your business to that next level and take it to creating your own platform. I mean, that's right. ultimately where a lot of people are trying to kind of grow. Yeah. And I mean, now you've actually made it so that artists and uh, you know anyone in the music industry can be heard on your yeah. platform, and you kind of control that. I think that's so wonderful. So, um, like, who? I mean, is there a specific artist that you kind of work with, or or do you have a niche, or do you kind of uh, focus on uh, a whole wide variety of different artists? So, so typically, what happens because I also have a podcast studio. Uh, I have, on average, maybe four or five podcasts going per season. Wow. Which is like a three month, you know, three month spell. And, you know, I teach them a lot of them. I teach how to do radio and how to do, you know, podcasts and actually get artists to come in as interested if they don't already have the artists in mind to come in and be interviewed at the platform downtown, you know, in a big, nice city, you know. So I teach them that in tune gives me more network. Right. This person sees them on the stream or in the station. So that next artist hits me up. So then it's just like a, a fall line. You just create a network that never ends. And then you're like, okay, the studio is just not going to get it. I got people contacting me right now from Italy now about submitting music from Italy. So I never imagined in a hundred years that it would pop off. And this is one year. Wow. This is our one year month last year. I started last year in March. That's, that's so amazing. And I mean, Crazy, I mean, now is a great time too to have your own platform like you do because everyone's going online. Everyone's, I mean, we're all in quarantine as of today, but we're stuck. I, go ahead. I said we're stuck. Everybody's yeah, we're stuck. stuck. So now, I mean, now you have a, like a, a, a way to communicate and really get your message out. And what I love uh, and how you teach is like, just like you said, and you kind of gave some of your secrets there is you use other people to kind of introduce each other to 
being on your podcast, you're making those connections. And, um, you know, once you get that one A less, uh, A list celebrity or D list celebrity who knows like a B list, you just keep um, leveraging those people to build your audience. And I love that you do that because um, that's how you've grown so fast. I was actually just talking on a pa podcast earlier with Samantha uh, Golden, and she was talking about uh, how we leverage relationships and how we use right. those relationships build our perfect audience and kind of combine um part, uh fan bases because mm -hmm. uh, just because you like one artist doesn't mean you're not going to like another or you're going to steal something from them they're still going to buy from you or um whatever you're they're they're just different people that people are finding interest in and right. i mean i i constantly am doing jv partnerships with people um i mean that's how you really just get your audience to grow and to leverage uh, your platform like you have been doing. So what what would you say is the best way to really start building out your audience like you've been doing? Uh, promote, promote, and more promotion. Uh, what, I, what I've found uh, with people in general, and it's not, it's not towards anybody, we have a short attention span. Yeah. So if you don't grab them in the next in the next ten minutes, they're they're already thinking about what to do next. Right. So the object of promotion is hit them with something here that they're not used to, uh, a cool video, or one thing. I, one thing I really pride myself on is giving uh, young women a chance to be on radio and do media. So I found that's more my niche than anything. I think the radio station is devised 87% of females. Huh. So like you'll have a cool show like Pretty and Plug, who's about women empowerment. That comes on two nights a week. Uh shout out to the Pretty and Plug girls. And then also you'll have a, a show Bridging the Gap, where uh four young ladies bring in all the city officials, the politicians, you know, what needs to be done next in the city. And like I said, the platform is taking off because we're hitting every aspect. Yeah. And I mean, that's, I that's the key. Well, and you, I mean, what's great is they not only are they um, able to post on, a, for instance, a uh, podcast where a podcast can be sent to different medians, but you right. actually have your own, like, well, I know we kind of hit on this, but I don't think we kind of hit it on enough. You actually right. have your own radio station where right. you're actually right. played in, I think you said 130 countries right now. That's where, correct. So right. where people can actually use, take their podcasts, subscribe, <clears throat> join in partnership with you and mm -hmm. uh, get their message out to even more of an audience. Um, right. And it's just, it's just insane that the power that you can use by having a radio station like yourself and how joining a someone like you uh, or joining a radio station will help them leverage so many different fan bases too, because I'm sure you cross promote, like just like now we're on a podcast, right. you're talking That's about the pretty do. girls, uh, the plug and pretty girls and you know, all those. And it's just all about cross promotion. So I think it's really cool that uh, how you, what you do is just amazing and how you're able to leverage these relationships. So, um, how did you actually get into creating your own radio station? That seems like a, a unique experience or uh, like, Oh man, how did that happen? Uh, so basically uh, what happened was, and this is just a sidebar off of what I do now. I worked at uh, one of the top HBCUs for 15 years, fixing computers. So you're talking about a network of six or 700, you know, doctors professionals and then they were like yo your voice your voice is made for radio right i heard, I heard <laughs> this friend, i heard that my voice is made for radio for about 15 years and it always stuck with me and i never was big on like camera you know this is big for me i was never big on being in the forefront i always want to work the background right, right, I'm, right. A tech guy. I'm a tech guy i want to make sure that your sounds right, yeah, that your audio's right, things like that. So uh, I just gave it a chance. Me and my buddy, we worked together uh, at, at AT and we said, let's do it. And instantly, it's like, you know how you get that brand new toy? Yeah. And you can't put it down? Yeah. Like, I, I can could, I could tell you, I, I never put it down for about two years. I just stayed fast at creating shows, creating marketing, 
you know, doing something that wasn't heard of. Right. You and, know, and, it was, and I, I took, like you said, I, I went in blindfolded and uh, I learned the system, learned how to program radio, learned how to do uh, business management, advertising. It's so much that comes with radio that I don't think people realize that the object of, like you said, this is money making podcast. You can actually make money while sitting at home and still doing things you love. Yeah, I mean, you get to, I mean, you're making money right now because you have all these different verticals. You have your right. podcast um, of guests that are going to be on there for the studio. You have your advertising costs that people pay you to be on uh, your radio station. Right. You have all these right. different verticals where, I mean, money making money online just doesn't have to be affiliate marketing or yeah. uh, sales funnels or digital aspects. Um, it can right. have it be a platform like station or whatever there's so many different ways you can make money and it just shows like i mean you you're just killing it now and you've just been just really started this new project uh over the course of a year but yeah. i mean it just yeah. goes to show you that even um people think that radio is outdated and everyone listens to podcasts but it really if you think about it that's just one more platform that you can leverage to really grow your audience i mean I we still so. use emails we still use uh um, phone calls. I mean, the, the radio is still going to be around and you can really just leverage so many different ways to make money and different vertical, uh, not different verticals, but different traffic streams, um, be it radio through like a private radio station like yours or, um, you know, going on a podcast. There's so many different ways you can get your marketing out there and really earn traffic. So I think it's so cool what you do. Um, what is like, what is some of the things you help people do within their podcast? Like say if I wanted to uh, say D major, like, Hey, I really love what I'm doing with my podcast, but I need you to really uh, get it out there more. Like how could, how would that onboarding experience work? So what we typically do uh, is I take a look and see what their end game is or their message is to make sure it don't, it, I don't, you don't have to be super positive. You don't have to come in and say, yo, I'm here, you know, to help. And that's all I want to do. You can actually have a subject line or a description for a podcast that would be dope. I just don't want it to be, you know, looked at and, and viewed the wrong way. Right. So first thing we do is we have a meeting to see where both of us are going and what you want. And I also look at some of the older podcasts that they've done before, kind of look at their experience. Right. And then we, we take it from there. And what I usually do is I typically show them how to market themselves worldwide rather than think local. Right. Because the, the thing I've learned growing up is locals going to always be there. Your supporters, you know, Facebook is there. Right. Facebook ain't going nowhere. You can, it's, it's a great tool. For, for family and friends. And now it's becoming a larger market because people are actually catching it. Okay, my friends can be somebody else's friends. Right. Whereas in the past, it was just you just linked up with your friends, you know, share pictures of family. Now it's becoming a business. Right. So what I do is I teach them, you have to have each one down pack. You have, you have to learn how to do Facebook. You definitely have to know how to do Instagram emails youtube and then you got this other platform with 105 and, and major uh media so use all five of those and phone them and stay consistent yeah that's the key if you don't stay consistent like i said i told you the uh, attention span of people is like that so you have to grab them every day even if you're not online tonight or you're not on if you're not going to be on the air still promote something that you did in the past or something you're doing with the business so people will know, hey, this is a cool person, or this is somebody I wanna follow. Yeah, and I think that's so important, like you said, even if you're not doing something, it you can repurpose content, you, you can automate a lot of, like I automate a lot of stuff, so even though if I'm not going live or anything, I'm sending out email blasts, I'm sending out chat bots, I'm doing things to keep uh, me on top of mind. And what I love about what you said at the very beginning of that is you really said that you really, kind of interview who you put on your podcast because you want uh you're only taking people that are really just kind of have their shit together not right. have a really good uh podcast that you know is going to be successful and you can promote because you know you have an audience that is primed to listen to these ty different types of podcasts so right. you're really just focused on having quality uh 
students in a sense that are going to use your platform. Um, I mean, obviously <laughs> these are uh, people that are also customers of you, of yours, but you're teaching them how to do the, do it the right way and how to right. really focus on getting their messaging and making sure that they're now fine tuning. They already have a good product. Now you're just taking it to that next level. And I, I love that. that so that is uh, super important. And I mean, that's why, like, for instance, my, our high ticket program for automation, we focus on people that, um, have kind of been in the marketing game for a little bit and they they know kind of the the understand of the messaging of how things work and kind of mm -hmm. understand but now we take them to that next level so just sure. like artists would kind of start off with their own podcast to really uh learn how it works and how the business kind of works um then they would come to you and take their business to that next level and be able to really utilize uh 105.1 and uh your other media sources so i think that's really cool plus you're buying into your network which is just yeah. huge in the in the industry of uh, the music industry so it's it's just amazing of what you can accomplish with having your own platform so um, is it is what's the next goal for you? Uh, I mean, I know you have so much going on right now. You have like your podcast, you have your studio, you're networking with artists. What are you doing right. next? Uh, I really, I really want to uh, start a TV studio. <laughs> you love your media. Crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but I really love doing this music thing, Brandon, and I, I like just media. I didn't realize. They gave it a name. It's media, but I didn't realize how much I really love media until I really started doing radio, which in tune, I created a little TV show called Reup TV, and we're like in episode eight for season two. So you just, it's just too much, man, not the love. You know what I'm saying? So really, I want to start doing TV, and uh, I want to do a movie. I want to do a cartoon. I have a lot of stuff I want to do, man. Yeah, and and it's what's great about it is as you've grown each of these verticals, your podcast where it's kind of now um, really self sufficient, and now you're working right. on uh, your TV state or sorry, not your TV station, your radio station. Which I mean, you guys just added like I think you said three countries over the last couple of days here. So that's yeah. just growing exponentially, and from there you're like going to make that where it's pretty much runs by itself um, because you're hiring. It, the it actually does. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but. I've actually trained three people to run their own shows, do their own, and they actually help me do other shows now. Well, I mean, so, see, there you go. I mean, that's why you're here at, uh, I think it's like a, a seven or eight there now. And yeah. uh, you're in the morning, you're here talking to me, able to do these upper level things where you're able to go yeah. now, put your face forward on things, network, get on stage, yeah. you know, do all these things, which uh, really is about building uh, and doing JVs, right? So now- yeah, uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Of course, man. I'm always it's here to cool. help out my fans and my group and my tribe. So it's all about just, uh, you know, promoting each other, right? So, yeah, but now you, since you've already made these two businesses on autopilot, it just allows you to, again, put all your focus on one thing and grow your next, which is your TV station, I would think. Yes. So, I mean, it's just crazy how you you keep progressing and how important it is to focus on one thing, make it so that you can automate a lot of it um, so that you can take yourself out of the picture so that you can really just focus on that next thing. Um, and it, it, this is the crazy thing, Brendan. I still work. I still work two jobs. <laughs> Like I've been, I've been at UPS for 21 years. Wow. And well, I mean, the benefits are just ridiculous too though, right? Yeah. It's, it's worth it. You know, I got two kids. Like I said, you, you coach, I coach football. So, you know, it works out for the family and, uh, I do healthcare. So I have, uh, you know, I'm out here in the front lines with this thing going on. So, All right. Well, yeah. I appreciate you, uh, you know, being out there and protecting all of us from you know this, this crazy virus so uh yeah, thank you for that man I, I definitely appreciate all that you do and um you know all that you are helping other people do by getting their messaging out there and really that's why we're here man yeah exactly that's why we're here, that's why we're here. so uh w i mean what other great tips can you give our listeners about uh the music industry or getting your own platform or really how a platform helps leverage so much more well what what what, what Creating your own platform, I think it gives you, it gives the people you're going to be dealing with the idea that you have in your head. So you're not stuck with, I can't do this. You know, some sometimes on Facebook, you might not be able to go live if you're playing some music. Or 
on Instagram, they might not let you go live for more than five minutes. So you get to create, you have to be a real creative first off and creating your own platform, but you also have to want to do it. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing I think is, is, is what I've done in a long time I've been working is created a work ethic. So when I'm not working, I'm working. Yeah. And, and I think that's a tribute to everything happening so fast is because like I said, even when I'm off, I'm still working on something. Yeah. Like and this, it, time, this downtime, I've already created two new radio shows. That's that's so crazy. And, and I mean, it's just that mindset, that work ethic that you've had and just that mentality of wanting to get your message out there and ha have your actual dream become like a, a thing that actually becomes a reality. I mean, you put so much energy and time into this first pro this project, not this first project, but this project of yours. Now it's actually making you a substantial amount of income and it's actually right. now being run on its own. Yes. And that allows you to really create more opportunities for yourself. And yeah. I mean, it still allows you to do the things uh, that you enjoy doing, like coaching football, uh, still working yeah. for UPS yeah. and helping yeah. uh, other people, like just how yeah. you're able to help in the medical industry. I mean, there's so many different ways that you are creating opportunities for yourself and, you know, just giving back to the community, which is, uh, you know, a huge thing. This, so the one, the one thing I can tell people and tell both of our listeners is believe in yourself. And, and, and one thing I can tell you is don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> yeah. Because sure. I've failed several times. If you, if anybody knows me, know I've tried a lot of stuff and it hasn't worked out. I've tried with business partners that didn't work out. It'll never get done again, but you're going to fail. And the only way you're going to achieve anything is to know and learn from the experiences of failing. Yeah. I mean, failure is, afraid to fail. I think failure is the best learning tool that you can have. It gives you so many data points, um, pain points to really know what you did wrong. So you can really just adjust your strategy and learn from them. I call them really just learning opportunities because you're able to take what you've done and uh, learn from it. I mean, I've failed way more times than I've, I've succeeded. I've exactly. created, I've created many, um, uh, businesses that and uh, brands that just didn't turn out well and um i i mean i still use some of the emails that i use because i just right. exchanged them but um they uh right. they uh Probably i mean provoked. yeah i mean they i still have those i mean there's they're still part of me they still kind of grow with me and uh i mean i'm always learning and if you're not failing you're not growing so uh ultimately i mean that's why I, isn't 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 it fun to see all the work you've done and how you've grown right from those first businesses and how you would just don't be afraid like i said don't be afraid to jump out there and just try it yeah i mean i went from being a personal trainer to being a real estate investor to being um digital marketer to software design to a high level uh ticket so i have all these things and the thing about it is is just because like I was successful in fitness and I did really well. And then I started investing in real estate and now I have 10 rental properties. And um, awesome. I, I constantly am taking what I've learned and those failures and I can uh, now apply those to different uh, businesses. So like I kind of know what the messaging and my perfect audience and uh, eco uh, uh, ecosystems and nurturing sequences and all these things from training and now i can re uh, apply those and change the wording and change the messaging within the digital marketing space um the right. i mean the, the the methodology is pretty much the same uh right. and the lessons are pretty much the same you're just tweaking the messaging and tweaking the audience so um yeah i mean failures are just really just great data points for us to learn off of that's right yeah i, I, I feel like uh i got one more do here soon i'm just gonna you know keep trying at it and like i said i'll take those failures and trying rather than not trying and just in my head that I didn't even attempt to do it. I've dealt with that before too, not doing it and seeing other people, you know, come up with the idea or even similar to like, and that shit pops. Right. And you're like, why didn't I, you know, so no more of that I'm not going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it. And I'll just see how it works. If it works, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Yeah. And I mean, there's no reason why you can't um, ultimately just, uh, take that idea and a lot of like, I'll go back actually, a lot of people get shiny object syndrome. And right. um, what a lot of people do is they try and do all these different ideas at once. And then right. they fail because they're not getting any traction with any of them. So they do 
really bad. So I typically right. put every um, new idea on my phone and I save it for later. So kind of like now we'll go back to what you said is I'll try an idea, see if it works, go at it full speed, learn everything I can, test, test, test. If I failed more than you know three or four times doing the same thing and it's not getting me anywhere, then I'll go through my phone. Okay, here's, I'll try that one now and yeah. give that. And uh, ultimately you see what works, what doesn't. And then you learn to actually from this test and this test, this worked and this worked. And now you're combining those things of things that actually yeah. worked. It's kind of like, it reminds me of the story of like, a, a, a comedian and a comedian will go to different uh, stages and will tell right. a joke and they'll have 10 jokes and you know mm -hmm. five of them will fail but five of them will do really well and then right. from there they'll when they get their hbo special they're taking all these their best two jokes from each of these shows that did really really well and they're combining them into their hbo um series and now have like just an amazing lineup of jokes because they've taken and tested all their jokes or all their businesses like we've done and combine them to something that actually works and is actually yeah. able to uh, progress our business. So yeah, I think that is amazing that you constantly are testing, constantly uh, seeing what works, what doesn't and uh, applying the principles. I think that's amazing. I think the, be the best experience for us all is life itself, you know, so. Yeah, and- You got uh, to, to go through life ups and downs to uh, really see what you learn, you know, learning. And like you said, you got to put some shit in the file cabinet that don't do. And then some stuff you gradually just build on it and create great things. So. Yeah. And th and that's what I love that you just said that is you got to experience life. So many people are just too afraid to experience life, too afraid to take risks. Um, I mean, ultimately, if you think about it, the grand scheme of things, if you were to try a business and say you made a, a great deal of money and it did really well, um, that's great and you've been successful, but say you try a business and you're not doing so well right now and it bombs and you have to file bankruptcy, like lo and behold, like you're still at the same place you were that you didn't try it because like you're, right. it's not like you're not going anywhere. You've tried something, it didn't do any well. It's not like it's, uh, most people that I know uh, on the online space probably rent, so they're not gonna lose out on their house. Um, they're not going to lose their job because they've already made their own job. So they can just take that as a learning experience. Not, they can right. still get a, uh, a nine to five job if they really wanted to, because most mm -hmm. places aren't doing, um, uh, credit checks. Some do, but I mean, right. it just depends. Um, but I mean, ultimately, like just because you fail is not a gravestone. Like ultimately right. it's a learning opportunity, like you've been saying, and it allows you to just uh, to see what works and what doesn't, and then uh, create something that you have and just make it just enormously be successful. And then that's how a lot of people, I mean, that's why a lot of people call themselves success overnight because they've been doing it for 10 years and they finally combined exactly all these right. different things and they're able to really become that one success because that one thing took and they're able to uh, actually do really well for themselves. That is correct, man. Because if you look at those overnight successes, <clears throat> they'll all tell you, I mean, I've been doing this shit 10, 15 years and it just, you know, so I, I, I'm, I enjoy the work. Yeah. I look forward to the work. I love the challenge, man. I'm, I'm always for it. So, I mean, D major, I mean, that's why I think we always connect. I mean, we connected on, yeah. I think on a Saturday and it was like, we're yeah. still both uh, like grinding. We're like, Hey, I want to reach out. Let's do a podcast together. I've been, you know, following you for a little bit now. So let's, let's, let's do this. And uh, you're like, yeah, I look I'm, forward I'm to more. I look yeah. forward to us having more. Of these exactly, man. So I, I was just like, you know, we need to uh, get on this. We need to jump on this. And uh, now we're here today and we're, you know, right. we enjoy, I mean, I'm, I, I'm sure you're the same way as like, you kind of don't look forward to Fridays because you know, it's like the weekend and people are taking time mm -hmm. off and you, Mondays are like, yes, new opportunities ready to go. Exactly. So, uh, and I think a lot of like the people that have that mindset just are so successful. They don't take no for an answer. They are really there to get their message out and they'll do whatever it takes to provide for their, their fans. So I think that's, that's what we have in common. And that's why we are just, that's why we jam so well. So uh, I always think, I always think if somebody tells me no, they they really want to say yes. They're just looking for reasons to say yes. Yeah, and I mean it's overcoming those kind of uh, those like kind of the three barriers, right? There's like the vehicle barrier, like 
this actual thing, will it help me? The internal yeah. struggle, struggles of like, okay, is it me that can't do this? And then obviously external struggles and that's all marketing like jam. And it's all, we all know this kind of stuff. So yeah, it's yeah. just, and we, when we've been in the market for so long, we know kind of the messaging and how we can kind of overcome those, those struggles and kind of fix that for them. But um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's so cool that um, we're able to connect like we, what we have and just been able to. Uh, it's like we've known each other. Yeah, I know. And, you know. I mean, we, we, it's, it's crazy because I mean, we've been going back and forth the last couple of days, but yeah, just like you said, it feels like we've known each other for so long and uh, we just have that like vibe. So I think that's really cool, man. So uh, D major, what where can people find more about you i know we've we've touched bases about your radio station a few times at 105.1 uh yeah. i mean and you're in like 153 countries i think which is insane um yeah, where can uh where can more people find out do you have a website do you have an instagram do you have we a do. facebook Just lay down well, on me uh you can reach me personally at instagram of course d major d m a e j o r and you can reach 105 at www.1051live.com. Uh, subscribe to us, man. If you're an artist, hey, send us some music. I'm always listening. I listen to music all day. So uh, if you're a business that want to promote your business in 130, exactly. I keep, look, I've got headphones, laptops. If you're a business, if, if you're a business or somebody that wants to uh, advertise with us, Definitely hit me up in the email and uh, let's just keep rocking, man. Yeah, I love it. Perfect. Stay consistent. That's all we can do. Yep. D Major, I appreciate you. Um, you know, where people can find you if you, like we said, 1051live.com, uh, D Major on Instagram, that's D M A E J O R. And uh, Facebook, also same thing. You can go on uh, and look up 1051 Live on Facebook. They have a, a group and a page. It's definitely easy oh, yeah. to get a hold of them. So uh, definitely look out for that. And D Major, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. And uh, thank you, Brandon. Of course. And if there's any last words you want to do, leave with uh, your guests or our guests, uh, feel free to. Uh, leave just it. telling everybody, please stay at home, self quarantine. Do not go out there. It is bad. Uh, I know everybody's scared, but the best thing you can do is stay at home and be creative and create something, you know, dope. So when you come out. Perfect. I love it, man. You have a great day and I appreciate you and have a good one, buddy. Thank you, man. Godspeed. Cheers. Peace. All right, buddy. All right.